to let y'all guys know who that is. Y'all know that's DJ Ryan Wolf always playing me in and always playing me out. Well, welcome back to another episode of the Lockout Man podcast show. I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and I am here today with another interview. This uh, young man comes to me by way of YouTube and Instagram. Let's see what we got here so I can uh, bring him here. Hmm. Let's see. So you've been driving for about, what, 11 years? Actually, a total of uh, 17 years. 17 years. Uh, yes, you're an Ohio native, so you down you you down with me in Ohio. I appreciate that. You know, I love love my Ohioans. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> six one four. Six yeah. one four. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like to bring to the show Trucker J. Seven o two. Sir. Trucker J seven o two man, where, where where you come up with that name? That, that's uh, that's the name for your YouTube as well. Well, actually, uh, you know my government name William William mm-hmm. Jackson, but um, seemed like all my life my uh, parents gave me a nickname of Jay, and I, I kind of hated when people automatically call me Bill, so I just uh, I just say everybody call me Jay, and then just you know, Trucker J. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <are> you... <laughs> I don't like. I don't like Bill. I mean, you know, people automatically. Hey, Bill. William. Okay, Bill. I. I, I never liked that. <laughs> you know what? I never understood where they get Bill out of Will from. I'm feeling like Will. I think I'm a prince. I'm feeling myself. I never get that. I. I, I don't understand where yeah. that come from. Like uh, you get we. Out of Richard. <laughs> we. We. We know that we know that the president, uh, Bill Clinton, but his first name is William. But he went by Bill throughout right. his throughout his uh, two terms as president. And right. everybody, you know, for the people that didn't know his full name, everybody just thought he was Bill. And but his real name, his his full name is like William. Where do you? Leave in the comments below. Where where do you guys get the the name Bill out of William from? And 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 another one, just like Trucker J just said, where do you get Dick out of Will? I mean, out of out of Richard. Where <laughs> where where did that come? Uh, where, where did that come from, man? <laughs> I have no idea. All right, brother man. So you you uh you you reside in Columbus, Ohio. What was you born and raised out there? Actually, um my parents that lived in um Elyria. I actually was born closer to your hometown. I was born in Elyria, but eventually moved back to uh Columbus, Ohio. I have a lot of roots in Chillicothe also as well, but yeah, I mostly spent um pretty most of my life uh in Columbus, Ohio. What what was life like back in uh back in Columbus? Oh man, I was just it was like a, a normal to me as far as the uh the three seasons, as far as summer and winter. But uh um, All in all in one day. <laughs> right, right. You know, Ohio man. is known for, for uh well actually it's four seasons. So, you know, we get winter, spring, summer, fall, and and well, I said it all. What? Winter, spring, summer, fall. Yeah. All in one day. Yep, yep. Yeah, my bad. I missed one. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we get it all in one day up in Ohio, man. You you gotta be. Exactly. You don't know what you, you wearing. Hmm. I know you like throwing frisbee one day, and then the next day you shovel snow. You know. Exactly. That's how. That's how it was. That's how it was. So, uh, it, I'm I'm looking at your profile, man. So you, uh, you you was in the steel mill for for a few years. What was life like back then, uh, working working for the steel mill? Oh man, that was uh, pretty much uh, pretty much my young days, like uh, 19, 21 years old. You know, go up, apply for a job, and uh, seven dollars an hour start out. And then you go up about eleven dollars an hour. I, mean, I, was, I thought I was making good money back then, boy. Four hundred dollars a week. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, a lot of guys went in there. You know, you had to buy your steel toe shoes, and mm-hmm. some guys didn't make it a week. 
didn't make it. Didn't work enough to pay for the shoes. Wow. You know, back then, you Harvard. know, back in our, you know, back in our time, I, I, I'm, I'm going to take you're about the same age as me. So you, you remember back in those days when minimum wage was fucking three dollars and thirty five cent an hour. Exactly. So seven dollars an hour was like, man, I'm making good money. You know, right? I mean, you know, these these new jack kids, these millennials don't understand the true struggle of how much we was making an hour back then. They they think they have a problem making eight, nine, ten dollars an hour now. Imagine right. coming coming up in the eighties, you know. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> no. I'm an eighties kid. <laughs> you know, imagine coming up in the eighties, motherfucking working at working at uh places for for three dollars an hour, three dollars and thirty five cents an hour. Coming home with a coming home with a two hundred two uh, two hundred less than a two hundred dollar paycheck if you work part time. Trying, trying to rack up that overtime. Just have a yeah, decent try, check. Yeah, to at least get a decent check back then, man. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> Shit. Right. So you know, for for right. these new for these new jets that's coming into the industry thinking. Oh man, we making big money now. Shit, imagine, uh, imagine what it was back in the day when when making three dollars and thirty five cents an hour, man. Shit, Ooh. come on. Rough. Uh, so you so you rocked out at the steel mill. Was that was? Did you get in the trucking after you uh, did the steel mill, or you did a couple of other odds and end jobs before you got into trucking? Yeah, it got to a point to where you know the steel mill I went to worked at another factory that factory kind of went out of business laid me off and so <clears throat> i actually went to uh started driving the school bus i got my class b and um i went from there and i got to talking to people and say hey you should go over to this lumber yard you know you drive for them eventually uh they'll train you so i pretty much got on the job training as i got my cdl i never went to actually cdl school i got my okay. training through the job and they sent me out and got my license through them now, did you 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 got your class A, or I mean, you got your class A when you went through them, or you you were still driving on your class B? I was when I when I first went to Lumberyard, I was still class, uh, driving on my class B, but uh, they eventually uh, they eventually trained me and um, and sent me out to get my class A. I actually paid for. It. I actually got paid to get my CDL. Oh, through a, so this is my a local. A. So this is a local lumber company. Are they are they still in Correct. business? I think are they so. Contract contract lumber in Groveport, Ohio. Okay. Uh, are are they still? Uh, well, I think now you actually have to go to CDL school. Now, really? I I think I, I think so. When I when I went to uh when when I went to school um I went to Tri C Community College. Uh, truck driving academy and i was talking to the guy okay. there or to the instructor in instructor instruct damn it man i was talking to the guy there and uh <laughs> he, he was telling me he was telling me that uh that yeah we we need hours like when you go to like when you when you go to driving like your regular driver's license you got to have so many hours in now same thing with truck driving school. You 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 got to have so many hours in school now well, in order to get Even back your... then, I think the uh, I'm sorry. Even back then, no. I think they uh, recorded my hours on the job training. Mm hmm. All right. So you uh, so in 2002, you started with a company called Sigma. What, what was uh, what was your experience with them? What was like? Man, it was it was hard work, good money, but it was it was hard work. It was my first experience as far as uh, leaving the state of Ohio. I was had routes in Chicago, uh, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, and you know I did that for about a year because uh, you know I, my, my my kids were still young and I wanted to be mm -hmm. home. So um, after a year, I uh, I got a job at a company called Gordon Food Service. They, they uh, kind of like initialized it as GFS. Yeah, they they local service. also. Yeah, I was home every day there, uh, Monday through Friday, and it was like both jobs were it's still physical, you know, up and down the ramp, mm -hmm. constantly touching touching the boxes. This is loading, this is touch dealing. freight. This this is touch freight too, right? Correct, correct. It's 
So let me ask you this. And- let me ask you this. A lot of people that's that's over here talking about, you know, getting into local, uh, you know, local driving, you know, let, let some of these people know that local driving ain't ain't no joke, though. I mean, you know, you local driving is is like city driving. You driving in the day cab, you getting into precarious uh back in situations you you gotta touch the freight you dealing with like direct customers let let people know how 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 that is man all right yeah it ain't no joke uh most most companies uh pitch on a timeline also you know you gotta you gotta pull up these different customers some of you have different customers you gotta know the situation you know you might be rushing they pitch on a timeline and you rush into a customer you've never been before you know, you don't know if there's low wires here or poles around the corner you might hit or you got to know of how to make the delivery. And it's kind of kind of stressful, if, you know, if, you're not, if, if it's not your routine of doing that local job. But some people are cut out for that, and, you know, they do that for years until retirement. But I, I got to <laughs> I got to a certain age. I'm like, man, I'm, I think I'm going to be done with this. I'm ready to get my own truck and just, you know, just drive, just pull up to the dock and pull the brake. Hey. Well, it looked like you've been. It looked like you've been with uh with Gordon for what eleven years yes, before sir. you moved. Yes, eleven years. All right. All right. So what was life? So you moved out to Las Vegas. Now I gotta ask you this. What was the reason why why you uprooted your family to Las Vegas, man? I mean, Las Vegas in my opinion really don't have nothing no no work unless you're in the gambling industry what what was oh, what man, was what, what was your pull out to uh las vegas well it all started with my son my son moved out here in uh, arizona and uh, you know he went to college you know he's a physical therapist and his wife is also a physical therapist uh both of them physical therapists and um they eventually transferred to Las Vegas, and we had our first granddaughter. Mm-hmm. And I can see it in my wife's eyes that the FaceTiming wasn't enough for her. So I said, okay, babe, we'll go ahead and move out to Las Vegas so we can be closer to our grandkids. Okay. And then since we moved out here, we had we had a second granddaughter. So, okay. yeah, the, the reason pretty much to be closer to our, um, our son daughter-in-law and uh, grandkids and actually my daughter moved out here with us and she uh she actually met her husband here in las vegas mm-hmm. so she's uh she married out here also so yeah so, let's move my family so, out here <laughs> so your kids so your kids first and then you so are, are are you out are you still in las vegas now yes yeah, oh, I've been here okay. since 2014 i, I okay. when i moved out here Gordon Food Service was not here, so I had to work for, uh, I had to get a job with uh, Cisco, Cisco Foods. Uh, all right, now Cisco Foods is just like, is is just like Gordon. Uh, you, they you, You're running local out there, and you pretty much home every day. Exactly. Oh, okay, okay. Man, talk to a brother, man. I, I have never, ever been to Las Vegas. I want to come out there for the longest time. My uh, my family member, she went out there. Uh, man, my my cousin's been out there like three times over, and I have yet to make it out there. I said, you know, when I become a truck driver, I said that's going to be one of the cities that I'm going to get to go to. Never right, ever man. got the chance, man. So, well, let me ask you this: I got a two I got a two part question. So, doing the doing during the 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 pandemic the virus they shut down las vegas like heavy what was what was the strip like out there uh through Man. your eyes through through your eyes well, what was the strip like well most of the time people on tv see las vegas just for the strip you know gambling yes. you know, people having fun but as soon as the pandemic went down they shut it down the strip turned in from from people having fun walking up and down the strip, gambling and going in and out of casinos. It turned into a bike trail. Everything was just shut down, and you were able to just ride your bike up and down the strip. 
it, it was so dead. It was, just, it was kind of sad, man, because we would always go down there at least uh, two or three times a month, you know, just mm-hmm. to hang out. Cause we're not big gamblers. We just hang out. We don't. I, I don't go down there to blow my money, but. Yeah, it just mm-hmm. it turned to a ghost town. But I tell you what, though, as soon as they said it was open, man, because I, I go back and forth to California a lot, and I could tell of all the cars coming from California to Vegas, it, 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 it was it was packed down there. Wow. It, especially the 4th oh, of July weekend, it was packed. Wow. So back they, they drove pretty, down there, and we got videos. So they pretty much, they, 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 they pretty much just threw the – just threw the virus right in the garbage and just say, yo, let's get back at it. Exactly. Huh? exactly. So, so I'm, how, not, how, I'm not ready. We, we, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. What you was about to say? I was going to say we haven't been to a restaurant, out to eat in the restaurant since March. So I'm not. I'm going to give it a little bit more time. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're going to give it a little bit more time, huh? All right. So, right. Las, so Las Vegas life, man. So you, 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 you pretty contempt? Uh, was staying out there. Would, now you don't stay by the strip. You, how? What's the housing? Uh, what's the housing cost? Man. What's the what's the cost of living out there? Because a friend of mine, it's, he moved out to Vegas too. It's not much higher than um, Columbus, just, just a tad bit. But the thing is, people get Las Vegas confused with Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. You go over California, it's ridiculous over there. A lot of people are moving here. From California because it, it's cheaper to live here. So, yeah, it's it, it's it's just a tad bit higher than than, than uh, cost of living in uh, like Columbus, Ohio, or Cleveland, Ohio, but not much mm-hmm. more. And people people's eyes that have never been to Las Vegas, or even people who's been to Las Vegas and never left the Strip, they don't they have no idea that like there's regular communities out here, regular neighborhoods. Like I live uh I live about eight miles west of the Strip. So I'm, I'm closer to the western mountains, but if I go to my the street that goes along my backyard and I look straight down, I can see the wind, hotel, I can see the light. Oh, okay. But it, it's, it's a regular, it's a regular city. I mean, if you came out here and, and, and checked out, you'll 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 love you'll fall in love with it. You fall in love with the strip for one, but some people need to venture out and see the rest of the city. Like like since we've been here, we've been horseback riding and. We go out in the mountains and hike, and stuff, you know, do that kind of stuff, you know. Okay, that's, <laughs> okay, that's what's up, man. That is what's up, man. Shoot, shout out to Vegas. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to get out there, man. I mean, you know, I'm a gambler, so eventually, eventually, I'm going to get out there. You know, that's that's one of my bucket lists. So I, I got to get out there. I don't know the the I don't know the present company where I'm at could. get get me out that far you know as far as right. you know route as far as routing me out there but i guess i'm just gonna have to hop on the plane and just then just spend a couple of days out there man um yeah. is the it, well i'm not now you've been now, now you're married do y'all it, it, before i get into before i get into the married part and asking if your wife rides with you it's you you said in your profile that you stayed with uh, with Cisco for as long as you could, and you decided to get your own truck. What was the what what right. was the what was the inspiration in the going to uh, getting your own truck? Well, I've been saying it for years. I, at first, I had the idea of being a car hauler, and then I got to seeing how much higher the insurance is, and it looked like a little bit more work <laughs> than I wanted to deal with as far as and, but um, it, had, it was I had no problem as far as getting a truck because my mm-hmm. credit was straight. Mm-hmm. So and I, I got the truck, and I was still learning how the whole business works. So when I first got my truck, I leased on to uh, a company uh, called Tantera or Sunset, and they're like a, a show freight company. Mm-hmm. And as soon as Las Vegas shut down, all the shows shut down. I had I had no work. I had it was like I had no work from February all the way for like two months. So I like so I had to. Uh, I like, so okay, you was hauling. So you was hauling. So you was hauling the 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 equipment for the for the shows. 
yeah, like concerts or if your company had a, a convention somewhere, like home and garden shows, mm-hmm. all type of shows, trade shows, uh, exhibit shows. Yeah, pretty wow. much audio, video, lighting, and that's a, that's a big business out here. When it, when when you know when things are going on, but once that shut down, a lot of stuff shut down. How is it? How, how is it now? Is it is it coming back? But I well before you answer that, I, I I noticed that some of the casinos is not fully, you know, getting back to where it used to be. So is that still affecting you, or you or you jumped well, into something else? Yeah, I, well after like like I said, as soon as that stuff shut down, I started putting it in the high gear as far as getting my own authority. Mm-hmm. So, and while everything shut down, I had everything ready to go, except I couldn't get my tag because the DMV was shut down. So that was wow. the only struggle I had. But as soon as, as soon as it opened up, I got my I got my authority activated. Uh, actually, June eighth, not too long ago. Mm-hmm. And um, ever since then, I've been taking off. I I've been kind of spoiled with this Amazon because it's it's like the easiest freight to get. Do you know I see everybody with their own authority is jumping on is jumping on the Amazon bandwagon. What is so uh yeah. what what is what is so tempting to to work Amazon? Well, by being like I said, I got my truck back in um April of 2019 and I leased on to this company. Well, this company I like I said I was still learning the business, but this company was taking 45% of every every load that I that I did, and also they were charging me for the trailer. So, and sometimes I'll be lucky to get two loads per week. It was so much waiting around when you when you deliver show freight, and so much mm-hmm. waiting around and to get loaded, and taking it here, get unloaded. So, I had, I had a couple of friends who um, got their own authority, and they said, "Hey, you can make more money and." You be able to have more freedom and go get this and connect the dot. There was a lot of deadheading with the other companies also. So was, was you still getting? Was money. you still getting? Was you still getting paid for the deadhead or no? Yes, I was. But the thing is that they'll tell you a certain amount, a certain dollar amount. But and that, you know, like say for instance, they're getting paid three grand for this, but they they won't tell me. How much the job pays? How much the uh, the load pays? But they could tell me anything, you know. So I, I was pretty much, I was pretty much just kind of struggling through that company and, and that whole situation. And I started to, uh, I started to, uh, I was heading to go to Landstar, where I heard they was doing better over there. Mm-hmm. Then I started hearing people complaining over there too. I said, "Oh man, I'm go ahead and let me go ahead and just get my own authority." And and ever since I have my own authority, man, I'm loving it. So with your own so with your own authority, man, you you pretty much control any and everything that you do, right? Correct. Exactly. So dealing so dealing with now doing like back up back up a little back up a little a couple of months ago, we seen that the truckers, uh, the owner operators had issues with with the brokerage companies and all like that. They felt that the brokers was uh was was giving them cheap freight which which they were i mean you know i mean yeah. a load that yeah. uh, uh you know a load that would normally should be about um, and i'm just using a grand that should be a grand they they giving it to you guys for like six seven hundred dollars uh, how did that how did that affect you with with the brokers now that you got your own authority, well, since I have my own authority, rates start been, been going up. Like I said, I only I started I just started my own authority June eighth. Mm-hmm. But during during the time where these brokers, in my opinion, they were using this pandemic as an excuse to say, hey, you know these these rates aren't high. But they, I, in my opinion, these rates hasn't changed. If anything, they went up because there was still a demand for a lot of product out here. Like I, I just started in June eighth, and it, it were, everything's been going up since. 
Okay, okay. Uh, you said you said a couple months back when when the brokers were doing this, I was still locked in with this other company and still in the process of getting my own authority. I, I had no access. From between March and April, I had two loads. So that's how dead I was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's how I'm playing catch, playing catch up right now. <laughs> wow. That is crazy, man. That is crazy. To right. See. It is crazy to see that uh, that that something like that, you know, with with your experience with the with the with the previous company that you know that that inspired you, you know, to put the fire up under. I don't want to say it, but put the fire up under your ass to you know oh, yeah. to get you know to get your own authority so you can start start making the kind of money that you want to make. Since you had your own uh, authority and since you had your own trucks. Uh, have your have your wife been on a truck with you? Have you know? Has she's been? Uh, has she? Do she have any uh, insp- uh, aspirations of uh, of getting her CDLs and coming out over the road with you? Uh, she's on the truck with me about ninety five percent of the time. Um, almost a hundred percent of the time, she's on the truck with me. But uh, I, I told her I say we're gonna get your uh, we're gonna get your learner's permit, and uh, <laughs> you know. Can actually practice with me and but i don't right now she's she's not interested in getting her uh cdl so she she runs a, a bookkeeping business okay her her and my daughter her and my daughter runs a bookkeeping business and you know she could do that from anywhere she could do that on the truck she brings her laptop with me on the truck and she also uh looks for loads for me also while i'm you know i'm going down the road trying to connect the dots and stuff but oh, that's what's up no no i don't i don't Cause most of my most of my runs are out and back because I live in Vegas. I go to San Bernardino or you know Marino, you know Los Angeles, and I I'm, I'm, I can do that and back within the 14 hour clock. So, uh, every now and then I might go to you know I might venture out to Dallas or you know, wherever I got you know some family at, or I might get some work done on my truck somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's just I, I love the freedom that, especially with this Amazon, that I can just book book a load anywhere in the United States. Okay, okay. Now they say Amazon you know, is wife, they they say Amazon's taking over, man. Man, I, I was surprised. I, I I thought UPS was big, man. I there's so many so many different Amazon facilities everywhere. And they use uh off site companies, different companies. UPS, SDs use them also i picked up loads from different yards so where did, so did so you said your credit was good uh for you to for you to just go ahead and uh get your own truck what what advice what advice do you got for these people that's coming out into this game that's thinking about uh that's thinking about trucking and buying their own truck would you suggest them to you know just hold up and and wait and and deal with a dealership or a bank, or would you suggest them to go lease with a lease with a company and try it out with them? Man, I heard so many bad situations with these lease. But some people have different opinions on these lease lease options. But from what from what from what I've hear and what I've researched about the lease, in my opinion, I, I mean the best way to go is. If you can, go ahead and get your truck financed uh, through a bank. Um, put as much money as you can down on the truck, and um, man, and go. That's that's what I did, and I'm I'm happy I made that move. But the lease, I have seen so many. Well, you break it. In. You break. You broke up a little bit. I, I didn't. I, you you broke up a little bit. I didn't hear what you said. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you broke up a little bit. You were saying uh, what your thought what your thought about lease was. Oh, I just heard so many people um, give up on that program and or fail at that program. And in my opinion, I think it's a waste of money, especially when if you don't go through the whole program, you know, the, the truck's not yours, and you just pretty much gave that company and. The company's getting over on people, I think, mostly on the lease program. So my my, I would rather, I would rather go to a bank 
can finance a finance a truck and put as much money as you can down on the truck mm-hmm. and uh, take a gamble on yourself and be out here hustling. It's all about communication um, and you know making a lot of phone calls and hustling out here. All right, that's what's up. How do you feel? Uh, how how do you feel? Being you you you've been in the game. You say seventeen years. How, how do you feel the industry yeah. changed throughout the throughout your duration of a of a truck driver being in the industry? See, as far as when you say industry, um, I'm referring to over the road trucking because, like I said, this is all new to me. As far as um, I've been in the food business, like food service business, for uh, for 16, 15, 16 years, and I just know it it's, it's kept me busy. Because um, you know, people have got to eat. People to go to restaurants, hospitals, nursing homes. You know that that pretty much kept me busy. So as far as this over the road industry, I, I'm just now experiencing it. And luckily, um, I did some research. And um, as far as this Amazon goes, if, if anybody was to get in the Am- over the road trucking, I, I suggest they get the the recommended insurance because Amazon requires uh, the $2 million aggregate insurance. And mm-hmm. I'm glad I got that. And that pretty much covers this company and also a lot of other customers that uh, pay pretty good. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So what do you, what, what, what suggestions or what, what advice you have for some of these new jacks that's 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 coming out here. What what advice you got for them? For the new jacks coming out in the over over the road driving, or uh, just driving. Period. You know what, what was your what okay. would your advice be for for driving? Period. Getting out here. Yeah, if it's just about getting their CDLs, and you know, and it depends on if they want to stay local. Like I said, I, as far as the um, companies that. That's over the road driving. I never did that really, but Sigma, I work for Sigma. Uh, it's food service. You know, they're young and physical. You know, energetic man. You know, go for the uh, food service or you know, delivering beer and you know, Pepsi, Cola, Coca Cola. You know, start off doing that. But some some people jump right into it. You know, they're able to uh, uh, or want to go lease a truck or, or buy a truck. Like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest leasing. But I, I would suggest buying it if you can buy a truck. Do a lot of research. I, I know research, 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 and then you can jump out here, man. It's, it's a lot of money to be made. You just got to know the, uh, got to hurry up, and learn, learn a lot, learn a lot. Cause that's that's the thing. If, if you come out here and kind of blind at a lot of things, um, it can like throw you for a loop. Okay, okay, all right. So Trucker J, man. Um, yeah. I, I see you. I, I, I see you heavy on uh, on YouTube. Um, what was what was what was your inspiration to starting your YouTube page, man? And and where and who, if anybody out here, you know that you that 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 you watch? Oh man, you know what? I actually haven't really made any videos on YouTube. I, I, I haven't got down to. Like professionals like you, <laughs> how you put the videos together. Uh, but uh, but um, for the past year, you know, we're going up and down the road. I mean, you know, my, my wife and I are going up and down the road. By the way, I I didn't mention that, that uh, my wife and I, we've been married for uh, 31 years. Okay, and, uh, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. 31 years. Okay. Sure. So we we going up and down the street, man. I mean, going up and down the highway. I sometimes go to the Bay and back. You know, Bay and back, San Diego. I went up to Seattle a couple of times, uh, Denver. But for the past year, man, I've been watching watching you. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, guilty. He's moved four four trucker. You know, Frenchy and Red. You know, and uh, just cracking up. You know, you know, watching PH too. You know, I'm cracking up at all this. Uh, I'm a so called trucker beast. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, we 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 might wanna we might wanna stay away from that part right there. Man. <laughs> I, you know, like I said, I, you know, I I, I got it. I I definitely got an opinion on it, but you know, I'm I'm like what my mom say. Just you know, just stay in my lane and keep my mouth shut and right. just 
and just keep on just keep on trucking you know what i'm saying because like i said i mean i i i do have some heavy opinions especially on especially for what's going on right now but you know like i said i you know i watch all of them you know i watch all of them i've been down with guilty 718 from the beginning you know during his days of cr england melton and all that good stuff i watch i watch party hard you know i watch some of the white boy truckers you know what i'm saying but see this is what i want to this, this is what i want to say i i, I want to say this you know i got a i got a uh i got a uh I got a message from Party Hard and, and another YouTuber and they was all here saying, yo, I got, you know, I got this set up and all like that. And, you know, looking at your setup, you know, it's pretty cool how you get it, this, that and the third. And I'm over here like, man, bump all that. Yo, <laughs> shout my name out. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I, you know, lock out me and the one that gave you guys the inspiration to go the the route that y'all going now. You know, nobody ain't even thought about getting the equipment that I got until I start mentioning it. You know what I'm saying? Until I start changing my channel over to what it is now. Yeah, I did the I, I did the 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 cinematic stuff i did the the vlogging stuff and all like that but i just said i i just felt that i i just felt that like i'm i'm a solo driver you know what i'm saying i don't have time to you know like literally cut a 20 minute video or a 10 minute video because that shit takes hours people don't understand that they think that they think that shit takes a minute or something like that. That shit don't take no minute. It, it takes like hours, at least, at least for me back in the day. But, but by me doing my podcast, I mean all I gotta do, you know, get some interesting people to come on on, on the channel and top, you know, chop it up and all like that. And it only takes me a couple of minutes to, you know, put the audio together, put the video together. Boom, bam, boom, I'm done. You know, and I appreciate yeah. everybody watching me. I appreciate everybody, you know, take, you know, getting whatever they can get out of my, you know, out of my videos and all like that. So if they can get some uh, education, some uh, entertainment, I appreciate it. But for the other for, yeah. for the other YouTubers that's going the same way, you know, that, you know, they want to, you know, do interviews and all like that. You know, they take their cues from me. And I'm like, okay, well, hey, come on, shout, shout me out, man. <laughs> you know, Party Hard just sent me a message in my DM over here talking about, yo, bro, is this what you got? Is this what you got? I'm like, yeah, I, I got it, man. That's a, that's, that's a good thing. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I want to get this too. And, you know, and a couple of other YouTubers over here, you know, trucker YouTubers over here talking about, Oh, okay, well, I want to start doing interviews with people and all like that, and I'm like, okay, okay, well, uh, make make hey, sure make, make sure you tell yeah, make sure you tell them that you 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 got your inspiration from me. Appreciate it. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't got nothing but positivity for all the brothers, man. You know? Yeah, there's that's hard, what, guilty, and everybody, you know. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what it is over here. Positivity, man. I mean, you know, I hate I hate to see everything that's going on. You know, with everybody in 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 this in this YouTube space, but you know, it is what it is. I I was taught, you know, like I said, I you know I wasn't taught, but I learned to leave, you know, leave my space small. You know, you know, people, my moms, my moms, my sister, and you know, a couple of other YouTube friends that I got said, "Yo, lock out, man, you're." You're a public figure now, man. So you gotta make sure you gotta keep your circle small. You gotta, you gotta be cool on who you fucking with out here. So, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I don't fuck with too many people. So, but uh, yeah, bro, if you ever out in Vegas, man, I um, you know, I'll show you the ropes a little bit out here. Or, I, or I'll give I, you some advice on where to go. I appreciate the love, man. Like I said, I am gonna make my way out there. Trucker J, thanks for coming on. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Uh, Thank where you, you head? Where you heading at right now? Where Where you heading to right now? I'm actually sitting outside uh, one of the Amazon facilities out here in Vegas. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, 
the, 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 doing a, go, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just here to say I was just here to do a local route here. Oh, okay. So with, with Amazon, you just go from uh, from D.C. to D.C., right? You don't do no stores or nothing like that, right? No, no. D.C. to D.C. Sometimes uh, they have off-site customers. They might have a customer that only deals with, like, jeans or a certain a certain type of product. Okay, okay. Mostly it's just trailer to trailer to trailer. Now it's trailer. The- this is dropping hook then, pretty much. Yeah, but it's all around. Let's say, for instance, if I have a a, a pickup here in Las Vegas, and I got to go to San San Bernardino, mm-hmm. um, I take a full one to San Bernardino, and pick up an empty, and bring it back, and they pay me for all around miles there and back. Oh, okay. And just one way. Okay, that's what's up. How do you? Before I get up yeah. out of here. Uh, with your own authority, how how did you hook up with Amazon? I mean, what was the what was the what was the process of getting you know get, getting not Amazon as 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 a client of yours? Well, I saw a, a couple friends um, during this pandemic. Um, actually, a couple friends of mine um, they let me run under their authority a little bit. I actually got kind of I learned the ropes a little bit of it. But just like any other carrier, uh, you go to their website and you say, and actually, if you want to join as a carrier, and they pretty much let you know their requirements. And once they have a list of requirements and the type of insurance that they require, and then I pretty much gave that information to my insurance agent. And, and I, I, just, I just went with that. And Amazon is like the easiest one <laughs> to work with. It, it's pretty much app friendly. I got an app on my phone. Mm-hmm. I look at the load, see where it's going, how much to pay, and I book it. I, I go up to the uh, the booth before I even pull up in there. They already know who I am, what load I'm getting, and they just pretty much say where it's at. I go get it. I, I really had no human contact, as not not really that much. <laughs> okay, that's what's but up. Amazon. Well, I'm I'm also signed with a lot of uh, other carriers, but. A lot of other carriers' loads are real heavy. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about Amazon. Some of their, most of their loads are real light, and they still pay pretty good. So a little bit less wear and tear on my truck, and, and good fuel mileage. Now let me ask you something: When Amazon goes to doing their own trucks, I, I see. I went into an Amazon fulfillment center, and I seen their own branded trucks. When they when they go and get their own uh, fleet together. Do you, are, are you afraid that they're 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 not going to use you guys as much? No, but they're um, they have their own trucks to do local runs, but they can't keep up with that. That's why I'm doing a local run right now. Okay. So they they pretty much so the ones that have their own truck, they're they're only doing local. They're not doing long runs. They're doing local runs, and I'm actually um, picking up a load here in North Vegas and taking it down in Henderson near the uh, Raiders uh, practice field. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> right across the street from there, they have a lion habitat, too. I was like, don't let none of them lions come out. <laughs> okay, okay. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, man. Well, again, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me on the Lockout Men podcast show, you can do that. It's easy. All you got to do is hit me up in the Gmail, lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can go over to Instagram, look me up over there, and hit me up in the DM. Say, yo, Lockout Men, I want to come on. I want to chop it up. Or you could text me at 216-600-2090, and I will get you on. If you guys have anything or any topics or any videos that you want me to watch, review, say, or whatever, send it to me over at the Lockout Man Podcast Gmail, and I will check it out. And if it's something interesting, of course, I'll bring it in. I'll talk about it or whatever the case may be. Uh, If you guys like content like this and more, which I know y'all do, I know y'all do, because Party Hard just hit me in the DM saying that he got the same setup as I got. So I know you guys like this content. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to share. 
and comment. Definitely comment. I know y'all. I, I know y'all watching me. Comment. Come in and say what's up, lockout man. I like what y'all doing. Y'all see me. Y'all y'all see me. Y'all y'all see the positivity. Y'all see the the glow, <laughs> the aura, the aura like Rick James. The aura, the glow. <laughs> anyway, hey, don't forget to hit the uh. I don't don't, care. <laughs> don't forget the uh. I don't hit care that. What they say, man. I appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that all button for uh, all the content. When you hit that all button, you'll get all the content that's coming in here. I'm going to get my cousin DJ Ryan Wolf. Who, who is that DJ? To play us out. And, uh, and on that note, you guys have a good day. Y'all take it easy. And I'll come back at you at, uh, with, a, with, a, with another video. Peace.